We were waiting for the green light. Oh, too late. Uh, I've, got, I've, I've left camera before to go get the whole can. All right. No! Get those words! Good morning, everybody. It's time for Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, over there. Uh, we are wishing you a good morning. We're here in San Francisco, ready to talk about the most interesting cars of the day. We've whittled them down on from BAT, from P-Car Market, from Rad for Sale, uh, Cars and Bids. We just whittle it down to the most interesting cars of the day. We nerd out about those cars with you guys because you're part of the nerd herd out there and then we make predictions as to what we think these cars will actually sell for when the hammer hits the sound block at the end of their respective auctions and that is happening today on all the cars that we're going to talk about hello michael deeb how are you today get that last sip of coffee in yummy oh man i cannot be happier to be here mm-hmm did Have, you see i know we're not the weather no, channel no we're not doing it Look, no it's Just, boring right I, I mean, nobody cares i had nobody to cares from everywhere else on to move my car this morning it's crazy <laughs> come on man it's summertime how are you happy to be here you're so vegas out that you think this is comfortable and i would trade places with you in a heartbeat to get some eat it's I mean, true well look at these milky white skin and my green veins you can tell i'm irish and i live in san francisco mm -hmm. it's awful well, there it is, the uh, Farmer's Alm Almanac weather report for uh, Bid Nerds morning. Um, we do this every morning, it is true. We get our coffee out here, we get up uh, crack of dawn, and we uh, we bring these cars to you. If you guys are on the East Coast, uh, I guess it's your lunchtime thing. Really um, quickly. Yeah. Because um, I know you love marketing and clever shit. Uh oh. Um, the name of this coffee place is called Four Barrel. Four Barrel. Yeah, it's a carburetor. Like joke. a carburetor. Yeah, yeah exactly. look at that. Pretty cool. Look so uh, we got Esther picked out. Bougie coffee from Four Barrel on Valencia Street, um, and I thought you'd get a kick out of it. So I am it. enjoying my bougie coffee. It's mm -hmm. very, very, uh, very good, um, and it's waking me up. And let's get to some cars. So the first thing we do on every episode is we go over the day before's predictions. Uh, so we'll go over those ca cars and we'll see how we did. And let me tell you, uh, as per usual, we're not very good at it. But uh, this is a rare occasion where my partner was slightly better at it than me. Uh, so let's uh, <laughs> let's go over yesterday's cars. I actually really liked the lineup that you uh, picked up yesterday. It before. was what actually was they were. I, I, you know what? I think we would drive any one of those five cars. Yeah. Like I would rock them for a little while. But the car you and I would probably fight over first. It was in fact the 1990 Porsche 964 C4 Targa mm. that had just probably seventy thousand miles. But it was in that like. Dark metallic gray with actually like a really dark gray leather interior and a black Targa bar. And then it had silver cup wheels, not the D90s, but the 17s. I mean, that was just, that car is a looker. 964 market is crazy. And this car, you know, is one of the rare models that they've made. Uh, four wheel drive, maybe not our first choice, but again, I say this all the time, I wouldn't kick that car out of bed for eating cookies. That, that car is cool. Um, so, anyways, I think we, we maybe went over on this one. I thought 84,000. It was on BAT, and I know you considered the platform when you said eighty-seven thousand. Our car sold for just eighty thousand nine hundred sixty-four dollars, so about eighty-one grand. Um, that's a fair price. Do you think P Car would have got more mark money for it than BAT? I, it, it it it's hard to ever say that. It's um, you know P Car Market is definitely catching up, um, right. but more money than BAT. I, I don't know. I got to think that the same exact audience. Anyone? There's no one looking at. P car um, and not looking at BAT. That's true. But you can't say the same from an inverse point of view. There are a lot of people on BAT that still don't even know P car exists, um, and that's pretty surprising. What is, it yeah. is hard to imagine, yeah. right? I mean, because P car is relevant. All their cars are cool. They are, uh, but you still go out there in the community and you talk about the most interesting auction sites and you list them off, and they go, "What's what? What was that last one?" And you're a P, like P car market, and they're like, "What? What, right. what is P car market? What is we, that? I've never heard of that." We ex we both experienced that a handful of times. Yeah, at Rad. 
Would. And that's and we're you know that's not a knock on P car. I mean they they're they haven't been around for you know ten years or more like BAT has. Um, I, it's just it's going to take a while for P car uh, to if ever get as big as BAT. And I don't know. I mean we've had Jim on the show, um, and I, I don't. I, I don't think their goal is to be as big as BAT. I no. think what they're trying to do is kind of own this niche market and right. get people with the really cool Porsches to bring it to their platform instead or as an alternative to Maximize BAT. Maximize their slice of the pie, yeah. which which is now relevant. I mean, I think it's considerable. I, yeah. I think they're doing a good job. You know, Doug might be doing a lot of lots, but he's not selling them all. No, and he's it, not. And, and we talk his rates about, over with like, you know, I mean, if, if it's a, if, if the consignment is a percentage, right, mm -hmm. he, he's selling, you know, throwaway cars, whereas, yeah. you know, PCAR is curating a collection of cars. You and I would take, you know, if they do six cars a day, you and I would fight over four of them. I mean, yeah. they're really cool cars. Yeah, for sure. So. And the only cars that they're adding to their lists are cars that are really special. You know, it, it, unlike, you know, cars and vehicles will take singers, pretty much anything. Yeah. The three singers this summer. I mean, come well, on, Well, no, that, but that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, that qualifies as technically a Porsche, right? What yeah. I'm saying is if they, if they add a car, oh, um, I see yeah, you know, sorry, if sorry, they're going to yeah. sell a car that's not a Porsche, right. it's going to be a Ferrari or it's going to be something right. really cool. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, fine, we'll take your, your right. you know, 300ZX. Or well, something. and they're not even selling Mondiales. They, like, their last eight 355s, I bet seven of them were <laughs> manuals. Mm -hmm. I mean... You know they're getting the good stuff, yeah. and uh, <laughs> we've we've said this the whole time. <laughs> we would check places with guys on Harpe, yeah. and nobody wants to live in Oyster Bay. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they've got a cool ass studio, but I don't want to be in Long Island. No. All right, um, what? Uh, well, let's get what one was more. the car? One more. P car actually had a 2004 yeah. GT3 with 20,000 miles in Polnick approved <laughs> Polar Silver. This car was hot, uh, and I, I know it sounds silly. From a performance standpoint, I love ceramic brakes, but from an aesthetic standpoint, I love the yellow calipers on the Polar Silver. This car, it, this is probably one of the hottest looking 996s I've ever seen. And I agree with you that the C4S of the 996 variety is one of the best looking cars Porsche's ever made. Um, but this thing is beautiful. So where is it gonna land? I said 120,000 and I was surprised you were maybe too pragmatic for your own good. You said 98 grand, you went under 100,000. Mm -hmm. I guess you take the under, but that was too far a spread. Our car um, made it to $116,000 where it sold in the organic auction. That car sold before the hammer. Uh, and I think it's a fair price. Um, so anyways, why what do you mean so sold before the hammer? Well, because so many of their cars sell in the deal tank. So in other words, oh. that car hammered at 116 and sold. Mm. Uh, I don't, I'm guess I'm explaining it incorrectly, but a lot of times they'll sell a car. By the time we get up the next day and look at the results, mm. they'll have sold a car where um, you'll have to look to see if it sold in the deal tank or if it sold on the thing. Got it. More often than not now, we're seeing that they are selling at hammer. Yeah, so. uh, I mean that car really is kind of the most beautiful version of the GT3, or you know certainly could, there, there's an argument for that. Um, the 996. Why, why do you think uh, that one wouldn't break a hundred dollars? I just because it wasn't low enough miles. Um, not yeah. that twenty thousand miles isn't low miles. Right, right. You know, it's that look to get that super super premium. It's got to be collector miles. It's got to be delivery miles. It's got to be like you know five hundred miles or maybe fifteen hundred miles. But twenty thousand miles. I mean, you see that kind of number of miles really affect the values of some of these really right. special cars, which I personally think is silly because you and I are both guys that doesn't matter. Miles right. don't matter to us. Does the car? Right. Uh, can we go and enjoy the car and drive it? If we own it, we're gonna drive it. It's not gonna be a museum piece. Right. But we're certainly not. Uh, you know, the only type of buyer for cars like this. There's a big portion, and it might even be a bigger portion uh, of the potential owners of cars like this want them uh, to look at them and to say that they have one that has low miles and that it's pretty. Now, I will say I'm driving around a 993. I've been driving it all weekend, <laughs> and people, hey, what, what's that car? They ask me, what's that 993? And I, I'm, I'm the first person who's like, yeah, it's a, it's a 96 993 with 33,000 miles on yeah. it. That's not the model, right? It's yeah. not the 33,000 mile model, well, but there's some of it. It's weird when you have a car with that few miles that you just feel your last silver 993. Right? Nobody ever mistook it for having 33,000 miles yeah. on it. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so, uh, like, wow, JP, nice car. How many miles are on it? You're like, actually. All of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, it's only 33,000. Yeah. And everybody looks at you like, well, why did you buy that? Like, yeah. you, you know, yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, I look forward to putting miles on that car. Thanks, uh, John Ortiz. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this this 996, um, 
Well, uh, I, I don't know if there would be a better car for me personally to have in my garage parked next to the matching color 993. That, that would be that one to That car is really hot. Yeah. Just need some white durs on the side. Maybe yeah. Some balls. I, I guess maybe maybe my low bid was just like hoping that it's like, geez, at a, over 100, I just, there's no... I, no. How, this okay. result proves that you and I can't afford that car anymore. <laughs> it's true. I mean, this was, dang it. Um <laughs> You know, there's a, there's a 991 that uh, I've had the pleasure of driving around lately, you know, with a manual and stuff like that. And it's a it's a 14 manual 991S. And that car is just a spaceship. It's, you know, modern. It has all the whiz-bang stuff. It's and it, it's crazy fast. And you know this particular 996 GT3 has got to be, it can't be as fast. Um, but maybe it is. You know, I've driven them, but I've never, I've never driven them back to back. Let's let's go back real quick. Yeah. Your 991 cab, the red car, has a seven-speed manual, right? It's not a cab. Oh, it's a coupe. It's a coupe. I haven't seen yeah. the car in person, no, so yeah, forgive right. me. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and, yeah. and I, it's hard for me to believe you'd spend that much on a coupe. But, anyway, <laughs> what, um, but it's a stick, right? It is a stick. Okay. Yeah. And you have you, you kind of explained it to me right when I showed up at God, mm-hmm. you were like, look, the manual is actually the DCT with a clutch pedal. It's not electronically actually. It's a it's yeah. That, it's, it's a it's a gearbox. PDK. Yeah, PDK. Yeah. Well, sorry, I said DCT. Yeah, wrong definitely not DCT. But, yeah. but a dual clutch transmission, which yeah. it is. It's just Porsche's version, um, which I believe is the ZF. Anyways. Yada yada yada. Here's this car, and it, it there's something very artificial about the feel of that, like the clutch relation and the shifter. That's not the same as the six speed manual that comes out of Visoc. That's in those. That's on the Metzger cars. Yeah. That is a much more mechanical, much more involved driving experience. So, you know, is it as fast? No, but is it more fun? Hell yes. Well, let's just let's be really clear for people who are you know watching or listening. The 991 that we're talking about is a seven-speed manual. It has a stick and a clutch pedal. It's three pedals. We're not talking about the standard PDK version. This is something that if you don't know this, look it up. No one believes me when I say it. But the seven-speed manual 991.1 variety, that transmission is a PDK. It's a fake manual. So... um, (laughs) It, which is now Listen, I've driven the hell out of these cars and I, you know, it took, I didn't know it for years. Like I drove, <clears throat> I had no idea, but it turns out that that is just a PDK unit and all that stuff is just connected in a different way. Uh, instead of using buttons, you're using a lever and a foot. Essentially think of the clutch pedal as a, another button. <laughs> you yeah. know, you're not hitting a button yeah. on the steering wheel. You're hitting a button on the floor yeah. and yeah. Porsche engineers it's, figured it's out a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it operates <laughs> and feels every bit like a manual. You yeah. hold the clutch in. That's going to, you know, that separates flyway. Everything's loose. You know, it, there's no way that you're going to know that it's not the real thing. And when you say it doesn't feel, I mean, I, I, Doesn't it feel more Japanese than German when you run through it? Like it, the, the shifter is entirely too light. Like it doesn't. Whereas I, the 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 GT3 shifter, it's like you got to get your shoulder into it. Yeah, you know? no, there's you know no doubt that the yeah. look yeah. one the six speed ratio is way better well, because the sure. six speed yeah. in the nine nine ones, like the in the nine nine one dot one, we're talking nine eleven R is the only one that had a six speed uh, manual, and that's a real manual. In the dot twos, all the manual GTs. Have real six-speed manuals, yeah. whereas the Same manuals, uh, yeah, seven-speeds yeah. are the PDK. Yeah. Um, excuse me. So there's no doubt that the real transmission, the transmission in the 996 versus um, the the fake, you know, manual transmission, the 991. The 996 is definitely better, but it's m- only marginally. I mean, really, when you're driving, driving it uh, in anger out on a canyon road or whatever, the 991s is so damn good. But that doesn't mean I'd rather have that, and that's yeah. my, that's the whole point. Is that yeah. we're talking about a price delta now, where it's like, all right, we're talking about cars that are worth about the same, around a hundred thousand dollars, give or mm-hmm. take, depending on what kind of miles you'd have. And I mean, right now, nine nine ones are enjoying a big appreciation curve because you can't get brand new nine nine twos. But as soon as nine nine twos hit the floor, nine nine one values are going to just are, are going to correct. Yeah. Whereas nine nine six GT three values will not because they're not all of a sudden going to fill showrooms full of, oh, hey, look, we found uh, a whole bunch of 996s laying around or we got chips to make them now. So that's just, you know, the 996s, there's only as many as there are and there's going to continue to be fewer of them. I can't remember the numbers on this, but I used to read this stuff when I had access to all the computer mm-hmm. programs sitting at Godden. Um, but if I remember correctly, there are far fewer 996 GT3s than there are either 997.1 or 997.2 GT3s. For but sure. I think they made, you know, 
over 1,800 to 2,500 of each of those 997 varieties, I bet the 996 production is less than 1,500. It could be as low as 12 or 1,300. For so sure. that in of itself should, um, you know, it help explain why the, the collectors are starting to realize, man, there's only so many of these to go around. They're a lot more raw than the, you know, each version of the car is more refined. So if you really like that sort of, you know, loosey goosey elbows up <clears throat> and the only thing that prevents you from getting in a ditch is your courage and your skill, then, I, you know, that's the car for you. And, and it's a, it's yeah, a great but, car. But let's be real. I mean, the 996, uh, you know, GT3 looks like the less expensive version of the of the 996 if you had the car if you walked into a showroom back in uh what's what year is this car 2004 yeah. 2003 whatever oh, you walk into a showroom you're going to see a c4s you're going to see a turbo you're going to see a narrow body 996 and you're going to see one of these parked next to a narrow body 996 and everyone's going to go towards the turbo or the 4s because it's the wide body yeah. they're not even they're not going to back then gt3 were three numbers or three letters that didn't really mean anything yeah. to the porsche public yet it took this was the car that kind of educated everyone and i remember for the longest time as as 996 is kind of languished in that kind of uh air you know that that purgatory for the longest time where people just hated them uh you know the idea people were like oh man that gt3 996 is really cool but it's narrow body so i'll never get one yeah that was me that said that you wow. know i remember going yeah i'm just i don't see myself spending extra money at this point i'm gonna go um but that was from a point of ignorance i mean i don't think when i said that i had driven one yet um and when i did boy the first time i drove a 996 gt3 uh it was like oh Oh, right. That's what this means. That Metzger engine is everything. I mean, it is, it's, it's yeah. a marvel. Yeah. So. No doubt. This car, far and away, would way rather have than almost any 991. Um, but, uh, but it is crazy how similar the performance is uh, by the numbers. Um, but you'd be crazy not to take the 996 version. Right. Yep. And it's probably a safer place in the long run to put your money. Which is yeah, from an investment point of view, for sure. In, yeah. in all that uh, yeah. time track. All right, here we go. Let's jump over to cars and bids. The 1993 Toyota Land Cruiser. This was the FJ, I think, well, like, was it 73 or 83 or something? It was, this is a car that was never sold on our shores. This one came from Columbia. JP, it's a convertible two-door medium wheelbase Land Cruiser with a manual transmission and an inline six. Our car was not the nicest condition. I think you were saying there was some rust and things underneath the vehicle, um, but it's unobtainium in that they were never sold here originally. So the fact that somebody brought one in, they've done all the work for you. The other part I think that you mentioned yesterday was, uh, hey, hello, it's a left-hand drive, and a ton of these could have been right-hand drive. Yeah. Certainly that's the case with the Land Rover varieties of the, the off-road vehicles that were never made for the North American market. So um, how cool is this car? Uh, I thought it was pretty cool, which is why I popped it on here, and I said 12 grand to back it up. Um, you uh, pointed out all the flaws of it and then took the over <laughs> at 18, which is really funny. Uh, and then the car sold for 13.5. So I think we did a pretty good job because we're straddling the value of the car. Uh, I just happened to be closer on this one. This was my third and last win of the day. Uh, are you surprised by that result? Uh I'm not surprised at it at all. I'm surprised by my bid, given that where the platform was. I mean, cars and cars bids, and bids yeah. has done kind of has done pretty well with FJs and weird, obscure off-road vehicles. That's actually one of the few areas uh, that uh, that cars and bids has the potential to do well. Um, but uh, you know, I, I failed to recognize that also uh, or put together. You know, this one's just a little extra weird and yeah. uh, bodywork, rust, Gold, miles, a uh, bunch of things against it. Yeah, it wasn't the looker. Well, I mean, the, the plastic hardtop, I think, is is a really cool thing. I mean, right. you know, this was the answer to a, 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 I'm sorry, a Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler of the era, right? I mean, Right, but I would um, make you proud if you gave me that car. I would take that hardtop off mm -hmm. and throw it in the garbage because I didn't like the way it looked. I, I just wouldn't have it on the car. I would only drive it if I yeah, could go with the hard with right. the top off. I would never be on my Land Cruiser, period. The problem with the hardtops is that if you're going to take a road trip somewhere, it's hard to just leave the hardtop somewhere, whereas a soft top you can fold down and take it up, you know, Right. put it up and down but you definitely want to take pictures of something like this without the top on it because that is the romantic way to own one of these um so yeah 13 grand this thing needs a lot of love if it were completely restored it could be i think it has the potential to be worth in the 40s but 40s wow. yeah i mean but that's with a full restoration and how right. much would a full restoration on this thing cost probably 50 you yeah. know or give this to someone yeah. like icon and, it and see where they go with oh it. wow yeah that's you know? crazy um i think the drivetrain there is good i don't think you need to go bananas on it but uh it'd be neat to show up to one of the, one of those things where all the jeep guys mm -hmm. go and they they do the trails i don't know if this if you would tell me that this is a climber that goes over oh the yeah rocks it's a crawler so, yeah. would it so you yeah. could do a crawl i think we need to show up in something that just wasn't sold on our shores yeah uh 
And then be cool enough to be like, yeah, if it rolls over, I don't give a fuck. It's only you know, thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, neat vehicle. Um, that's fun. I we gotta get one and drive it. That would yeah. be really cool. Yeah. Or get your Land Reaper rolling and let's let's that move that different baby. experience. Look at uh, this Jeep Jeep Cherokee though. Wow. Yeah, Pioneer with uh, JP remind me. I think it was like ten thousand original yeah. miles. This is an eighty-seven. It's an automatic, but it was you were saying it's the first year of the four-liter inline six that had fuel injection instead of carburetors, uh, and that motor wound up. I mean, they, they massage that motor for another... I mean, they still make it, really, right? Isn't uh, it? No, they stopped making it in 2006. This, 2006. This, yeah, they retired right. it then, which is a bummer because... Oh, most, so mm. they, they yanked 19 years out of that drivetrain. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Um, you know, the, the shape of the Cherokee is super familiar. The Pioneer, um, neither one of us would knew if this... The, I mean, with cloth interior, it's not... And roll-up windows, it's not the top of the line, but it's probably the, not the bottom of the line either. Yeah, the top would be the Laredo. Oh, yeah. Fancy um, leather. Yeah, that would have a... Yeah, exactly. And, AC and a... And roll-up... Or um, bias, automatic windows and, and stuff, yeah. But this one has alloys and, uh, you know, it's... yeah Some I think, graphics. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the Pioneer is the cheap one. But well, anyway. Be wrong. Yeah. Here's one that basically it, it looks brand new. So yeah. where are we going? I, I went 30. You took the under. I knew I was in trouble. The car sold for 25.5. I think that's a fair result. I don't. I mean, what, what more would it... Like you said, if this were a Laredo, would it have brought over our values? Probably, right? If I don't manual, know about that because not? honestly, um, you know, like, a, like brand, a 911... Big Wagoneers bring serious money, though. Sure, but that's a different animal. Okay. Wagoneers, okay. yeah. I mean, not wag- a fair comparison. Yeah, yeah. Um, a Wagoneer would be like comparing a, a you know a Cayman to a, a Panamera, right? Uh, you know right. the Wagoneer is a much bigger lumbering thing. But the the thing about this particular car being that it has manual windows and you know think of like a 911, like a GT, like an RS, yeah, right? It's, uh, it's it's a stripper, right? So it has less stuff to break, and it's not that you know these were terribly unreliable in uh, regards to their accessories it's not like a european core car where all the power windows and stuff starts to fail but you know they are things that fail so it's nice to have a manual window um you know this one has an automatic uh which uh, you know would we rather have a manual in something like this of course but this thing man you could drive this to the end of the earth um i think it should be worth more that value was a little low but so you think that's a good me. deal on bat at 25.5 for the for the ten thousand mile 1987 Jeep Cherokee. I, I, you know, I gotta think that a low mileage one like this is only gonna do is only gonna go up in value. I agree with you on that. I think you and I agree that whoever bought this probably isn't gonna drive it. It's collector miles. This car, it's hard to believe, JB. That's a 34 year old car. Yeah, that's that's the bonkers. I, I, if Jeep came out with a retro Cherokee. You know, mm-hmm. they did announce a new Grand Wagoneer, yeah. um, and I've seen pictures of it, and it's not, it, it just doesn't harken back no. like they did with the Bronco. Uh, you know, they just didn't do it. Um, and I think if they if they came out with something that did, and it got a bunch of attention, it would raise this ship in the harbor as well, much like we're seeing the Broncos sure. uh, skyrocket in value, the old ones, because of the new one coming. Um, so the Cherokee doesn't have that artificial lift, uh, but is just one of the best vehicles ever made, in, you know, of all time. I mean, it's it's just. There's so many of them, and uh, with that four-liter engine, it's just hard to break one. The only really weak spot in this thing is the transmission. The, those automatics are really, really good. Yeah. Three-speed automatic. Or something yeah, like yeah, speed. and they're not super, <coughs> super reliable. Excuse but me. the funny thing is, is, that thing fails. It's going to cost you, you know, fifteen hundred bucks to rebuild, Cheap. which is pretty hilarious. Um, <coughs> all right, me. all right. Last car was the 1992 Mercedes-Benz 300 CE. This was a Euro spec car with a five-speed manual and cloth interior. Uh, car had just over 100,000 miles on it. Um, you know, where, where, where do people appreciate these? They're not sports cars, so it's really only appealing, I think, to the Mercedes crowd. I, I don't think somebody would just happen upon this and go, oh, it's a stick, I'll take that, you know, when they're, uh, you know, loyal to a different brand. I, I wouldn't even think somebody who likes Audis would jump on this car. Um, so it's a, it really still has a narrow window of appeal. So I went 14 grand, you went 13.5, and the car sold for $12,000 on cars and bids. So I want to start by saying that this consigner was on the wrong platform. I think you would have got more money on P-Car Market, let alone BAT, because I think that car is neat and it probably drives better than the American ones. I'm sure the suspension is firmer. Um, and then, you know, you've got the manual, which was never available in the States. So that, that could be a cool car. And I think you left money on the table at 12 grand. He could have been much closer to 20 than to 10. 
this is the this is kind of a car that I'm I'm disappointed we weren't around to go get. I mean, th this is a forever car, man. Yeah. You could buy this thing, drive it for 20 years, and it'll still keep going. And yeah. for those of you who are not watching this, if you're just listening, go check out the pictures. We always put the links down in the description below. Um, but this car has a cloth interior. It's not just a manual. It has a cloth interior, so it is very very unique. Um, and kind of like that Cherokee that we were talking about, it is it's kind of a stripper for a Mercedes. There's there are fewer things in this thing to go wrong does this even have a sunroof i don't think it does Probably right yeah. and uh, you know are those roll-up windows yes they are in a dang mercedes how is that possible so, so jason Camisa has a 190e 2.3 16 valve that's an yeah. 85 and i have an 86 that's a north american market car where mercedes is considered only a luxury car mm -hmm. i have a sunroof i have um power seats i have roll-up windows i have automatic climate control Camissa's car has a cloth interior that's the Pepita check. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure if he has a sunroof or not, but I know for a fact he's got manual operated seats and roll up windows. And yeah. he searched for a very long time to buy his car off a little old lady in Germany. His car is about 200 pounds lighter than mine, and his car makes uh, 20 horsepower more. Those two things conspire to make a, you know, a completely different driving experience. And I think. This 300 CE um, would drive that much better than an American 300 yeah. CE. So there you go. Uh, you know, know. nice yeah, car. Really nice cool car. car. Crazy low price. Twelve thousand bucks. That's a steal. Nice I rip. think the re I think you know when we say roll up windows, just as a point of fact, I think the just the rear windows are roll up and like the front windows are actually power or something like that. On I this think, car, yeah, yeah, yeah on this fine. particular weirdo. Car. Still, it's a it's yeah. a neat car that we didn't get here. Not like this. I mean, look yeah. at it. Even looks like it's lower than yeah. the American version. That front has got a nice little stance to it. Anyway, JP, that's the day. I got three. You got two, and our week is underway. Happy Tuesday. All right. Well, if you guys haven't hit the uh, like, subscribe, or notification button, go ahead and smash that now Michael Deep has the smash button there and he's shaking all the cameras and everything so that's exciting yeah. um, look at him go first time doing a podcast <laughs> uh, so no we really do appreciate you guys uh, watching the show we love the nerd herd out there we got the, got a chance to meet a bunch of you at the Radwood uh, just uh, the other day on Saturday here in San Francisco and we had such a great time meeting you guys thanks for those of you who came out and said hello it really felt great to, uh, to see some of our audience um, so yeah great time out there and congratulations once again Again, to our friends from DWA and the whole Radwood team, Lane, Art, oh, yeah. Warren. They, yeah, stay in innovation. Bradley. Those guys hit it out of the park. That was yeah. a good show. Um, everybody there was in a really good mood and having fun. The variety of cars was great. The weather turned out perfect. The fairgrounds turned to be a perfect backdrop. Uh, man, if that's uh, if, you know, like if that's the way you start, it looks like it's going to be a good season for yeah. them. And boy, I'm sure they'll be relieved if they you know do a couple more shows that are as fun as that one. Yeah, for sure. And we get to go see those guys uh, as soon as we're done with the show. We're heading down to Santa Cruz to record an episode of Driving While Awesome, the DWA podcast, um, our, our is it favorite fair to say, automotive is it, uh, podcast. Right? Is it fair to say they begged us to come on the show? They literally begged uh, right. after we asked them if we could yeah. be on there. I think they begged us to not after, show up. Yeah, they're like really, please, they're can like, we not have you guys? They're like, don't you have a lot of stuff to do this week? And yeah, we're like, no, right we're now. totally wide. Open, whatever day you guys want. Art and Warren. Yeah, if you beg us to come down, we'll be there. So or we'll just the be there anyways. We're asking to be on the show. I, <laughs> yeah. What do I do? They, yeah. I, we're like, as far as Radwin and TWA guys we are concerned, JP and I are like family. We never really go away. So, <laughs> yeah. Or like a certain kind of disease that you need, like, oh, antibiotics. It's a forever. Yeah. It's a we, forever. We pretty much. Um, <laughs> that means it's viral. There's a simplex version of the good nerds. Um, <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, you know what we'd really like you guys to do? The Nerd Herd. If you hear about a car that we talk about today, we're going to get to the cars of the day right now. Uh, but any of the cars that we talk about, we would love it if you went over to the respective platforms for those individual cars and in the comments below say that you heard about the car on bid nerds let the other nerds out there know that bid nerds are here for you and be part of the nerd nation uh and become part of the nerd herd we, we love one. it we got one yesterday buddha our friend mike myers in las vegas who's proudly from south carolina <laughs> clemson tigers go tigers uh buddha has selected a car for us uh for thursday and i don't want to totally give it away but it's on cars and bids and he gave us a bid to go with it to back it up. So Buddha mm. not only selected a car for us, but he put his money up. And so we have his bid already on our, uh, you know, our live document. And then we'll get to it on Thursday, the day it closes. So, so what, what uh, be what like Buddha and send us submissions and give us a bid. Yeah. Be like Buddha. Yeah. So tell everybody 
that the bid nerds are out here. And also, let us know about cars that you want us to uh, talk for about. For sure. So thank All you, right. Buddha, for uh, sending that car in. We're excited to look at it. It's a That's a mean-looking car, JP. It is. I'm excited about it. Let's yeah. rip through some cars today. Uh, we're really going to start smart. with something unusual. This uh, this uh, sport wagon is kind of cool. This one's cool, JP, because check it out. It's a 2010 BMW 328i sports wagon as it's listed on BAT. But BMW calls their wagons touring. And I like the touring moniker better. The car does have the M Sport package, which means it's got uh, 18-inch wheels, it's got firmer suspension, but visibly it's got this uh, attractive and aggressive uh, aero kit. Like that front lower grille, I think is pretty hot. The rockers blend in really nicely, and I think the rear valance underneath uh, the taillights uh, will also be different because it's an M Sport package car, but they're calling it a sports wagon. The car is Six-speed manual transmission. Um, it's a three-liter, normally aspirated inline six. There's just 71,000 miles offered out of Los Altos, California. The car is an attractive um, Le Mans blue paint. Um, I wouldn't quite call that cobalt blue, but it is sort of like a metallic navy blue, right? Like maybe not that dark, but it's not, I don't know. Anyway, it's really, it's, it's a good looking car. Uh, where they win us over, JP, is if you make your way to the inside, uh, the car was ordered with black Dakota leather and the aluminum inlay as part of the M Sport package. Mm -hmm. No burled walnut or chestnut interior that looks like an old man's car, or as we would say, a boomer's car. Uh, this thing is hot with the aluminum inlay. Uh, the other thing that, that's really worth noting here is that we see a lot of um, M wagons that are done with all-wheel drive. They wind up being IXs or something, but this one is a two-wheel drive. So this is actually a really fun car to drive, and I think that's what makes this one so unique. They don't make a lot of Tourings. Um, they don't make a lot of Tourings that are stick, and they don't make a lot of Tourings that are stick that are two-wheel drive. Uh, and now this one also has the M stuff, so it's a great-looking car as well. A lot of life, I think, left on that drivetrain with only 71,000 miles. This is a car I would absolutely purchase and drive. I mean, JP, with three and a half hours to go, this thing is even at 20 grand. That being said, because it's not the turbocharged motor, this wasn't even probably a $50,000 car. So these are pretty good bang for your buck. Kick this car out of bed for eating cookies or would you keep her? This is the way you want to get a BMW. I mean, let's face it, nobody's buying a BMW sports car anymore because they kind of don't make them. Uh, who wants an M3, I mean, or a 4, or whatever? Does anybody even know what the heck an M a BMW is anymore? This is kind the, of the... The, the huh? new one's an M2. Like, you got to get the M2 now. Yeah, like, see, the exactly, package. whatever. I don't even, I'm not even going to, like, devote any brain power to trying to sort that crap out. BMW, figure your crap out. Nobody knows what you sell anymore. You had the most, uh, one of the most iconic names in sports car history... Mm -hmm. And you like now right. fuddied up all the uh, nomenclature and nobody knows what the hell you guys are doing. Uh, so screw you, BMW. I really hate BMW right now. Um, but this car represents kind of like the last of... Uh, this is like when BMW still knew what the hell they were doing. This is the last of them. Uh, E91 platform, and they were they were a good platform. It was a great platform. And this particular powertrain, this straight inline six, three liter thing, um, with you know matched with a six speed, does this car have mad power? No, but it has fun power. This yeah. car is actually fun to drive in a two wheel drive version with a shooting brake. I mean, come on. This is... Uh, yeah, this is like if you had to pick a car that was like not terribly expensive, one car under forty thousand uh, dollars that could do everything that could you know you could uh, if you you could fix up your house, you put lumber in the back of this thing, you could go camping, you could go to the Dogs, grocery bikes, store, the whole thing. family, yeah. yeah, and still take it out on a twisty road on the weekends. Um, every single thing that you want to do with a car, other than maybe put the top down and you know with your best girl, this car is pretty much it. You know, if this car were a different color, it would be just like it, I I. Know that I'm most yeah. people are going to disagree with me. Probably people really love this color, but if it were just a basic color like a silver, black, white, I think it would just be so fantastic uh, to just be that that car. Um, it's even got the dog gate in the back. I mean, this it's good to I go. 70,000 miles, yeah. it's such a reliable powertrain. No stupid turbos. Yeah. Um, you know, just update the cooling system, and you're pretty much good to go with this thing. This is JP, this is a great car, and mm -hmm. I, I need to go on. When you get the M Sport package, it's not an exterior cosmetic package. You get different suspension tuning. Mm -hmm. uh, inside the car, you get a more aggressively bolstered seat. You get a shorter shift ratio, so you get the quick shift put in and then you get a thicker steering wheel i mean they address everything the sport package on the bmw back in the day because i don't know if it's true anymore 
uh, meant you got a better all-around driving car, not just a car that looked sportier like yeah. Mercedes and Audi would do. Uh, it was just a cosmetic treatment. This is a legit better driving car. And again, two-wheel drive. I love this thing. Uh, so JP, with three and a half hours to go, our car is sitting at $19,328. Um, I believe in this one, but I, you know you can't go crazy because, uh, I mean, it was only a $50,000 car brand new. So I'm going to go $26,000, which I still think is high. But it wouldn't surprise me if it gets there. I, I think, you know, they're, they're right there at 20 grand. So what do you say? Nine bids it's sitting on. Yeah, I mean, this car is so good and it's such a unicorn in so many respects that, um, you know, I really uh, want to bid higher. But 70,000 miles is some miles. Um, not that it's really going to affect uh, how functional this car is, but it's probably going to affect the value. Um, geez. If this were like a twenty thousand mile car that we we're we'd be talking thirty something. Right. I am gonna bid over you, but just okay. by a little bit. All right, go ahead, and then I'm gonna give you the opportunity to change your bid. Um. Okay. You were at twenty six and yep. what? Yeah, twenty six. Okay, so I'll go twenty seven. Okay. So now, uh, what if I tell you there's minor damage on the Carfax? Uh. Yeah. Who cares? Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, I mean, so you're staying there. Yeah. So we didn't mention that because we, I don't think it's gonna affect the value here. But I wanted to give you yeah. a chance to make like a blind, you know, like a blind honest thing yeah um but it's minor damage it doesn't say that it's an accident it doesn't even have the yellow triangle it just yeah. has a little thing so there's nothing there um did he change like one piece of the suspension to m3 and put a different intake it's just a really nice car so 27 year bid i think uh yeah one of us is gonna win so we'll see cool. what happens all right i think the winner is gonna be whoever gets this car man i'm a little jealous <laughs> that's, that's very 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 well done yeah. there we go you want to go to p car yeah all right look at this banana Woo, baby another 2010 but this one comes from stuttgart what we're talking about here is a 997.2, 911 base Carrera with two really important options, the six-speed manual and the factory aero cup kit, which is really cool. So it's, it's basically got the GT3 front, air, uh, front, front end with the front air dam that I think the owner of the car painted from black to yellow. It might have come all yellow, but I'm not sure. And then it's got the uh, .1 GT3 rear wing. It's got black 19-inch uh, wheels. And it's worth mentioning this has the aggressive uh, sports seats, the adaptive sports seats, which have the shoulder bolsters that you and I would like uh, being <clears throat> of the barrel chested variety. These seats are incredible. And I think this, even though um, this is only a base career, it's a dot two base career that makes about 345 horsepower. Mm -hmm. This car will scoot, you know, uh, it, you don't need to win a drag race in this car, but when the road gets twisty, I think this is every bit a great car as you could possibly imagine. The 997 manual is a six speed, not the seven speed that is that fake manual that is actually a PDK in disguise with a clutch pedal. Um, this is a legit six speed manual, sport chrono package and a few other odds and ends. Um, I don't know if I mentioned yet, but it only has 18,000 miles and it's offered out of Paris, Texas, which is in the middle of nowhere in Texas. But at this time of the year with the AC working, this would be a fun car to drive home, I think in either direction, east or west coast. So JP, would you get off your wallet for this car or what? Ooh, man. I love this car. Me um, too. I mean, a dot two, uh, that is, that's that's the 997 that you want. They hardly made any dot twos because uh, we've talked about it before. They uh, That was during the recession back then. Right. And um, and so right. Porsche... Who hit the fan in 09 and it took a while to come out of that, right? So Well, this... yeah. And Porsche basically said, all right, well, to keep prices up, we're just not going to make any cars. So, you know, good luck finding... Uh, that's why you know, if you've ever shopped for a dot two 997 you felt the frustration there just aren't any cars out there there aren't any uh, and when you do find one it's PDK um, maybe you find an S and it might be a cab or it doesn't have sport or whatever you know this one being a base with the chrono really is this man you you look at something like this and I think this might be a God, I'm going to say this. Uh, the better car than the 996 GT3. Yes, I said that out loud. Wow. Um, it, it's it's not, actually. But I think... A little be, easier to live with, it's, though, right? Yeah. I mean, this car, it, you know, it has that look of the GT3, but it doesn't... And it doesn't have anywhere near the horsepower. But the Dot 2s with just a little more horsepower feel so good. The, the 997 platform is just... I, I like it so much better than the 991. I would I would way rather drive this than Your the 991... S for sure, which Jim, has gobs more power than Jimmy. Let me lob one over to you yeah. so that we can pretend like we're educating our four listeners <laughs> or viewers. Um, when we get to the dot two, 
of the 997 variety, we are now sidestepping the IMS bearing and the bore scoring. Is that Correct. fair to say? Both of those issues were cleaned up by the time this engine came off the assembly line somewhere in Stuttgart. Is that Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is, uh, not only is it a fun car to drive, it's a more refined car to drive than the, the, the even the more attractive 996 variety. Yeah. And then this is arguably, you know, like you could just forget about it. It's super reliable and you don't have to worry about something going wrong other than maybe running over a, a nail or a screw and getting a flat tire, right? Yeah, by all accounts, this, en this version of the engine is finally, um, you know, it, it's Metzger type uh, reliability. They don't yeah. have you know, th that IMS thing that just hangs like a dagger over your head and all the dot ones. It's just, it's, I've owned one of these, not this particular, not an arrow kit one, um, but a 997.2 ownership experience is uh, surprisingly, it, it's just, it's just nice. It, it, and I've owned not dot ones and you're always terrified every time you hit that ignition mask. Okay, your black arrow kit car with the tan interior in the manual that you owned mm. twice was that mm. a one or a two that was a dot one so that was a, that was an 05 so and that it was car also looked a base it wasn't an s no that was an s it was an yeah s. Okay. so that one was terrifying and it had higher miles um which and, is part of the reason why you didn't consider it long term yeah, yeah it was just you know it was it's just too i, I can't take the stress of long term <laughs> 996 or 997.1 dot one uh, ownership yeah, yeah it's just it's too just man I, you don't want to have that so, so let's bring this home because we've been talking about Porsches all morning. Yeah. Um, if you can find yourself a 997.2 that you like, whether it's a base mm -hmm. or an S, mm -hmm. or if you're really lucky, a GTS, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's a coupe cab or even the rare Targa, that's a car you want to grab because if you wait till 991, mm -hmm. you're getting a seven speed. And if you go back to 7.1, you're talking about unreliability. There's there's this variety of bore scoring mm -hmm. and IMS bearing that you have to contend with, and you just got finished saying that you just wouldn't consider it long term. So, yeah. dot twos, while they made less of them in all varieties because they're coming out of you know financial hard times and recession and all this nonsense, if you can find one, that's a car to grab because here's your six speed and here's your power, refinement, and reliability. Yeah. And there's few of them out there. Yeah. So with all that in mind. Why is this car only at forty four thousand? I mean, didn't how we just talk about how much time is that? Three there? hours to go, and it's on oh, yeah. P car market. Um, it's on just uh, twenty one bids, but I mean, it, in my mind, it feels like we've talked this car up to being like a sixty thousand dollar car. Yeah, how much do you think it's going to get? get uh, to? That's a good question. Um, we should have a show about that. I, <laughs> I, I've talk, I guess what I'm saying is I've mm -hmm. talked myself out of my bid. Mm -hmm. I put fifty grand last night, but I think when you, if. If the average nine eleven shopper is even half as educated as us two goons, um, they'll know better. So I am going to go 55 and say I am sort of slightly betting against the platform, but it wouldn't surprise me if this car brought 60 or more. Maybe it should go higher, 59? I'll go 59. There you oh, go. so you give me two bids and then you... Uh, look, <laughs> oh, I'll go 55. Um, I'll go 59. No, no, it's fine. Take your 59. Yeah. Uh, take, uh, take your 59. I'm yeah. fine with that because I'm going to go way the hell over you. You are? Okay, uh, all right. Way the hell over you. So is that, it was at 41 last night on 17 yeah. bids. And JP, just before you give us your number, it's at 44.5, under three hours to go, on 21 bids. So this car is getting auction, a lot of action. For Picard Market, yeah. 21 bids with three hours to go, that's... There are a lot of people on this car. Yeah. So wherever you go over, I I think you're you're not out of the realm. I am gonna go seventy five on this car. Holy and that's low. Okay. Um these things have gone crazy. Wow. Um, base career for seventy five. Base career, but and it only has what, eighteen thousand miles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and it if looks this nice. was fifty thousand miles, then it, I think your number is still low. Look it looks nice. There's yeah. um the, the seats and everything look beautiful. I mean this car does not look rubbed or used or, or like left outside or anything. So it's, it's a really it's nice that, car. It's that yellow color. It's got air yeah, it's got the arrow yellow, and it's right. got the chrono with the oh, seats. This car is fancy seat speed yellow it is, yeah I was right. Um I mean if anyone's yeah. ever driven a nine nine one dot one base, you'll know that this car is so much better than the nine nine one base. Wow. Um, like, uh, it, like the 991 base is terrible. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's a terrible car. And, and even in manual, 991.1 yeah. base. Yeah, that seven speed is not. It's the seven not speed. Fun. Well, it, it's not just the seven speed. It's the problem that, uh, I mean, the seven speed is the thing that saves it. Um, <laughs> you know, at least it's got manual and you can have fun. You got to wrap the hell out of it. But it has no torque. It has no low end. It right. It is like, it feels like driving an SC. That 3.4 liter engine in the dot ones is not big enough for a car that's that big. You know, the 997 base 
is a 3.6 liter. So it has more torque. It's a smaller car. It's a lighter car. Uh, and it has a proper six speed. And this one having uh, chrono, it's going to have that snap to it because the yeah. throttle response is going to be wonderful. Right. Um, you can this, adjust it on the fly. Yeah, I mean, this car is, look, it, think of it this way. A, a, a 996 something like a 4S, right? That's a 3.6 liter engine. Yeah. Um, they didn't have, the, the S variety of 996s did not come with more power, unlike 997s. A 997, um, you know, the S variety had a bigger engine with more right. power. So uh, think of this engine as kind of being the ultimate version of the 996 engine, still a 3.6 liter, right. which is a great, you know, size for this, uh, for this boxer motor uh with you know the direct injection just a little bit more horsepower this thing i think has 345 horsepower. it's exactly right which yeah. is the same as the 40 uh the 40th anniversary car same as the 40th anniversary car and yeah. almost the same as the s from the previous generation <laughs> 997 so with chrono uh a more reliable package and it looks like this car i go yeah. on and on, and on. Like did i give a number did i uh yeah you went 75 yeah it, it this man this car is Fantastic. So I, funny. We have gone so esoteric and abstract with all these numbers and years and stuff. Uh, <laughs> the eight people watching the show, six of them have fallen asleep yeah. at work. They're like, <laughs> yeah, don't I have like, a TPS oh report to do or White something? Noise. Yeah, entertaining. They're just, yeah. they're just somebody at work with like sheep just jumping everywhere, like, oh, this way, that way. Just, you can watch the show later. Uh, you know, this is live, oh, yeah. but we'll, let us remind you yeah, that it's videos. on YouTube. You could just, you know, turn this on to go to sleep. Yeah. Think of that. Yeah. Just uh, uh, let us uh, sleep apnea. Yeah. Yeah, there you exactly. Go. Don't take Ambien and become a zombie and kill your neighbor. Just listen right. to nerds. Our next car, JP, proves that the pendulum swings way <laughs> the other way and goes in a totally different direction. Check out Cars and Bids. Uh, what's his name? Doug DeMiro has sourced a 2002 Honda Insight <laughs> that is offered to us out of Sunnyvale, California, which, JP, if you look out the window and through the fog, it's just down the road there. Yeah, I saw um, 98,000 miles on this one. Uh, it is a one liter hybrid inline three front wheel drive with the five speed manual in a very attractive Silverstone metallic. <laughs> and JP, is it fair to say that this car was maybe just a smidge ahead of its time? Or even though it came out, came to market before the Prius, the Prius just did a better job of bringing this basic platform or, or style of car to market. And the Insight had a very short life. And I don't know, was it well, would you say this car was a success? Was it well received or or am I, you know, correct in thinking that like this is just an unusual car, nobody wanted it, and so maybe they'll go up in value because there's probably not an, enough nice ones left. This is a no reserve auction, um, and it's only sitting at forty three hundred dollars, so it's not like there's any real money on the table here. But man, you don't see them on the road at all, right? I used to make television commercials for a bunch of Honda dealerships back oh, so in the era really when these car. came out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Talk and to me. I remember the general manager of one of the stores just going, "Yeah, these cars are sales proof. We cannot get rid of these. Nobody wow, wants okay. this car. It's not enough power. Not enough room." Um, their first, you know, kind of version of the of the hybrid. hybrid thing. It was it was a great. There were people that absolutely loved them. There was a small niche market, kind of like uh, people who love diesel rabbits, right? There yeah. there was that nerd out there that was like. Like, oh, just you know, there, it was the perfect car for the engineer who had a huge, long commute from way out in the middle of nowhere to like the Everett Boeing plant. Um, that said, uh, you know, the hybrid market is a weird one because, yes, you're right, Toyota then came out with the Prius, that was their answer, right after, um, right after this, and then Honda answered back with a hybrid version of the Civic. Um, it was this kind of battle where, where this hybrid thing was kind of like, yeah, is this hybrid thing gonna happen? Yeah. Um, the mistake with so this car actually was closer than the first Prius from having the right formula because what this car was was very different from most normal cars except that with a manual it felt too much like just an underpowered normal person car. Right. Um, the, the success of the actual Prius um, and when the Prius, the second gen of the Prius came out, um, it was, you know, it was a four-door car. Um, of course, it didn't have a manual. It was no, automatic. Like two-speed automatic. It was a two-speed, yeah, yeah. And it was like, it, it, and the Civic came out. The Civic looked like a Civic, any other Civic. When right. the Civic hybrid came out, it was a great hybrid. And for people who just wanted a hybrid but didn't want to look like they were driving a hybrid, um, it was the great car. But that was the problem that Honda didn't quite realize, that everybody that wanted to buy, uh, everyone that wanted a hybrid 
for sure the main reason they wanted a hybrid was to let everybody on the damn road know that they were in a hybrid. Right. That was the whole point. They wanted to, it was that, you know, uh, what was it? South Park's famously made that episode that it, they run on smug, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, it, so it, it's true. just the whole point of Prius was to let was was virtue signaling, right? Yeah. So you're driving around this car and they sold 3, 4, 5 to 1 yeah. compared to Honda. And, and it was crazy. I mean, I, out here in California, I remember Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. famously going and getting one and making sure that the paparazzi saw him, you know, driving his Prius around Hollywood. Yeah. That, that, like, you know, and again, that was the thing. Smug, yeah. We we took a for uh, good reason. But, yeah, but smug nonetheless. The the Volkswagen TDI, the early versions of those, uh, were touted as being very clean. And boy, we can have that conversation. But um, <laughs> we were hired to basically to to do all kinds of promotion for those. We took. Uh, a TDI from Seattle yeah, and yeah. drove it to here in San Francisco. We did against challenge another yeah, car, right? against the Prius right. to see which one uh, could make it on a single tank of fuel. And it's and, interesting to see one did good on the highway and one did good in town, right? It was correct. Not the yeah, yeah, the TDI was far superior on the freeway. Yeah. Um, but uh, the funny thing was that we had these huge decals all over it that were like, you know, we had the web address and all that kind of fun stuff. But it was like our car, our car gets better fuel economy than your Prius. And when we were driving around. Uh, San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, yeah. when every other car was, was a Prius, Prius we yeah. were getting some dirty, dirty hippie looks. Let me awesome. just tell you, it was such a good time. We yeah. just thoroughly enjoyed that. If there's one thing San Franciscans hate, it's the truth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, take the word for it. Yeah. I uh, think denial's a uh, estuary in East Bay. <laughs> the thing about this little pilot, though, is you know what it's actually most similar to is a CRX. Um, they, they actually, Thank these you. things do drive. Well, I mean, yeah. with a manual, they are kind of fun to drive. 73 horsepower, 91 pound-foot of torque, which is very little. But I would say that this car weighs extremely similar to a CRX, despite it being hybrid and having some batteries. Well, the this batteries a, do weigh quite a, a bit. This is a tiny-ass yeah. car. Yeah. I think it would be easier to fit and sit. Like one of us, having to sit in the backseat of a CRX would be easier than, I think, a CRX. Well, there is no backseat There is no CRX. backseat. See, that's why yeah. it would be easier. Yeah. And this car has... I mean, this car has a back seat, but it's truly for amputees. No, no, this car has no back seat. No back seat. No, yeah. There you go. So that's I'm mean, uh, really good. I, you know, deep. I'm going to cut you off and say you would be surprised how much room there is in one of these. Well, in the front, yeah. Yeah, in the front, the driver's seat. Like as a big person, you're not going to have any no, trouble. No, but that's been true of Hondas all the time. Yeah, I mean, Accords and Civics and stuff. They're yeah. really roomy on the inside. That's what Kevin O'Connor should race as a Civic. Right. He'll never do it. But. It's like and, and look at this. Look at the dashboard. What does that remind? What other Honda does that remind you of? All of them. <laughs> well, I mean, really, it looks like. It's kind of like the early, early, early version of the S2000. Oh, I get you. It's I a lot you. It more like a, a, a 2000. It's got two leg gazes, but yeah, yeah. Like the pod and the shape is there. I'll give you that. That's, you know, that's fair The enough. Civic didn't the look like look that. The, I mean, yeah, you know. Anyways, these things are weird because they covered those uh, rear wheels with the things to, mm -hmm. to give a little aerodynamic um, you know, assistance. And yeah. then uh, it winds up looking like... I don't know, the, the, the track, the, the distance between the two wheels in the rear is pretty narrow on this car. And yeah, so they just always, tires. They always just looked a teeny bit awkward and a little too pretentious for their own good. So it is interesting that it didn't succeed. Um, it was only 20 grand when it was brand new. Uh, that'd be like $30,000 today. Car's at 4,300 bucks. It's only on six bids. It's also a no reserve auction. And Finally, the last handicap for this thing is it's on cars and bids. Or is that a handicap? Would you say this is the right platform for this unusual piece? Um, I, I, it, there are definitely cars that are going to struggle more on cars and bids. This car is weird. Uh, it's not very expensive. Um, the cars and bids might be the place for it. You yeah, know, well, B cars not going to list it, so yeah. it's just whether or not B How many miles does this thing have on it? 98,800. Man, this so thing's just getting started. It hasn't had the battery refresh, though. That's uh, the other thing, because that costs 4000 bucks. Modifications. Mm -hmm. Bluetooth, additional sounding, known flaws. I mean, you say. see these with a couple hundred thousand miles all the time, 300,000 miles. I mean, they just go and go and go. Yeah. Um, so I, if I'm you, not seeing anything in the notes, and I'll give Doug DeMero that. It's mm -hmm. really easy to find information quickly on mm -hmm. his site. Mm -hmm. Why he doesn't do a better job curating the cars is beyond me yeah. because I think he's got the superior platform and he just he has, he's from not a functionality. A, yeah, he's not taking advantage yeah. of it. I can tell yeah. you right now, I don't think the battery's been done because just, I go right to the notes and yeah. it's not there. So, anyways, all right, what's your number? <laughs> I put six grand, but I, I'm not even feeling good about it because this car's not going anywhere. It's no reserve. It's going to sell, yeah. but I don't think it's got yeah. another fifteen hundred bucks in it. I'm I'm, how many? How many bids? 
Uh, six. Six? At 4,300 on six. I'm going to bet the over. I'm going to say 7,500 bucks. I, wow, I mean, that's actually cheap. fairly low miles for one of these. I mean, and there is a weird ass niche market for these. Somebody wants this car. Like, imagine if you had to commute to LA and back from uh, from here in San Francisco Bay, or right. if you had to go to Vegas. Right. All this the is time. a manual versus the Prius being a, a car you just would not yeah, want to see. At least it. this thing's going to be remotely interesting to drive, whereas yeah. anything else hybrid is like, forget it. Um, all right, let's get out of here and let's go look at uh, some other cars. What else we got? Okay, so do you remember, JP, when we were at Rad the other day, Radwood, the booth next to us was um, Euro Classics. A guy named Marco, uh, who has a business in San Mateo, literally blocks away from the San Mateo Fairgrounds. He famously brings in uh, European market Lancia Delta Integrales. I think that's the backbone of his business. But he gets other unusual cars and brings them to market through his uh, very modest shop. But he's a really great guy. Marco's a great guy. And the cars they have are really cool. He has sourced, and it was on the lawn next to us, right next to the, the Bit Nerds booth, was this Mexican market 1983 Volkswagen Beetle with just 121 original miles on the odometer. The seats are still covered in plastic, and all of the production stickers are still in the window of this car. This is essentially a museum piece because it's like a leftover that never got sold at all, period. Mm -hmm. Like, And I'm sure, obviously, somebody bought it or whatever, but even those tires, JP, look at the tires on the first picture. Um, those are the original tires from 1983. I mean, this is this is really a footnote in history. Just and just Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so what's interesting, we you and I were um, going back and forth on this. We think, or at least we agree that we think we're right that 1979 was the last year for the Beetle in the U.S. So um, in '83, when this car was produced in the plant in Mexico, I mean, this was a car you there there, there is no equivalent to it in the USA. So just a really neat car. Marco's got it. I, I imagine there's a very easy way to put it on a, a domestic title if it's not on one already. Uh, but what would you pay for a leftover Beetle? Now, you and I know air-cooled Volkswagens have a very strong following, but I would at least assert that the further back you go, uh, late 60s are more valuable than anything from the 70s. Early 60s are more valuable than late 60s. And if you can find something from the late 50s or mid 50s, those are the ones that people will pay through the nose. You get these unusual shapes like the split window rear and all this other stuff I don't know much about. So this being one of the last ones to make, I, I don't know that this is going to be a big collector car, but if but if you were looking one, this is probably the nicest one in existence. So anyway, well, take it away. Uh, yeah, I, well, number one, this isn't anywhere close to one of the last ones made. They continued making these till 2003 in Mexico. Wow, the Pueblo Mexico? factory wow, was making weird. brand new Beetles till like 2002. Oh um, they still make brand new powertrains. Um, and they still make transporters down in South America. Wow. Um, so, you know, it, when, it's funny if you've ever been to deep Mexico. I mean, it's one thing going to like, um, you know, the, the, Cabo. the Cabo or something yeah. like that. But, you know, like I, I've actually been to the factory um, in Puebla um, and it was back around 2005, right after they had completed uh, making these. Maybe it was later than that. But anyways, um, the, the point is that, uh, you know, these are everywhere in Mexico. These are everywhere in South America. There are new beetles and new uh, transporters rolling around That's all so over the place. That's yeah. so weird to me. Uh, and it's also funny, too, because you see, like, Mark IV Jettas driving around everywhere, and they're brand new. Oh. They still make the Mark IV Jetta because... You know, in other markets around the world, that people don't care about like, oh, we gotta have the next greatest. For it. They're just like, does it work? You know, yeah. and is it cheap? They already have the tooling to make it. They don't constantly change well, the safety requirements yeah, like the they do here. Parts are there, right? yeah. So the parts are readily available, which makes it easier to keep them on the road, right? Well, yes, but but I mean, think about here. They every couple of years they change emissions requirements or they change uh, sa you know NHS uh, safety requirements on newer cars, and so the manufacturers have to constantly make new versions of the cars because the old ones don't. Pass the don't new pass the new standards, yeah. right? You know that's why we've talked about the fact that you know Porsche uh, Classic has all the old you know uh, die sets you and I saw in Germany when that we got cool. to go there. Yeah. Uh, we got to see that they could essentially make a brand new SC right now. Yeah. They have all the tooling. They can yeah. make new 993s Stiegel, and did Stiegel bought yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. They made that gold uh, that gold version of the 993 Turbo that we saw at Rensport right. a few the years last back, right? Chassis. They yeah. Built it. yeah. And the the crazy thing about that car is anybody that knows anything about it knows that it, you could never register that car to drive on the road because right. it's a brand new manufacturer. Or it's a it's a brand new factory car uh, that doesn't meet. It's a 2019 right. 993, but but built to. <laughs> 
98 specs and yeah. that wouldn't pass today's, that wouldn't pass, yeah. pass today's things. Yeah. So this car, uh, you know, it, it also, you got to wonder, I mean, it's a great market car, so I'm sure there's a way to get it on the road, but nobody's going to. The place this car belongs in um, is a car dealership. There's a car dealership somewhere that wants this on their showroom floor. For sure, um, that's a great take. And is rad, rad for sale. Who we, you know, we love the guys that uh, run this place. Yeah, they begged us to be on their show. Yeah, they begged, <laughs> begged and pleaded uh, for us to just stop bothering them. They're hoping that if we they let us be on their show, they'll just be like, okay, fine, yeah, now go, now go away, yeah. stop talking to us. Um, <laughs> I don't see this platform finding that audience, um, you know, and I'm, I wish we did more homework because I know a lot of Volkswagen dealers and uh, how much time does the car have on it? Uh, one hour and 49 minutes. Man. So it's closing. Yeah. As soon as this show's over, I'm going to text like a half dozen, uh, or VW, VW dealer owners that I know that go, Hey guys, you, sh you should go buy this thing. Is this, does this have a reserve? <laughs> Uh, it does, yeah. It's yeah. not a no reserve. Uh, we have not seen too many lots on Rat come across no reserve. Yeah, which and I think is a mistake since uh, a handful, or at least a portion, a, a significant percentage of their cars have been, you know, modestly priced, modestly valued cars. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, for their long term success, they really have to lean on their consigners. And be like, look, your best shot at selling this car is to just yank the reserve and trust us to do it. And it's then, a double edged sword, though. They yeah, don't absolutely. have the audience. Had absolutely. I done that uh, with my own Jeep, I um, you I'd have lost my butt, right? you know. But and, then, but Radwood would be that much closer to, you know, getting mass adoption and, and, and saying, we're here to stay, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you you got to cart you, before the horse, right? Uh, it's, I, it's, you got to cut something to, to get where you're going, you know. Um, yeah, but the, okay. So when you say that, though, think about it for a second. Who has to cut something? Um, the Radwood, right. sure, they want you to do your car right. for for a low reserve, right. but okay. they're but Radwood isn't the one that loses anything by right. that cut. It's right. the seller of the car. Right. This why does the seller have to make the yeah. uh, again? Make the I, I, look, I'm not sitting in other meetings, yeah. but like they, then they got to make a thing. Well, we don't take a commission for you or whatever. They got to do something to help the guy out who might stand to. I don't know. Look, it, yeah, that's a whole other discussion. I, the car is at sixty five hundred bucks, JP. I, I think there's value in this car, but I don't know that um, Rad is going to get it in the next hour and forty nine minutes. Yeah. I, I put last night with the, all the hope in the world, knowing that this was a stretch, that that car should bring twenty five to thirty thousand dollars, but uh, that they're not going to see it. So even even I wrote twenty four grand, but that's just like that's what I think the car should bring. Um, if I put fourteen thousand dollars, I'm not confident they're going to get it. That's twice where it's at right now. At sixty five hundred, thirteen is twice where it's at right now. Yeah. So, um, does it get to eight? Does it get to ten? Does it get to twelve? Sure, maybe, but it's not going to sell there. The reserve is higher than that. That this should be a twenty or twenty five thousand dollar trophy, even though nobody's ever going to drive mm -hmm. it. Um, but that's that's going to be hard to find, especially in the organic uh, marketplace. So I love that Marco put it on there. I love that that Rad Wood Rad for sale. Has got Marco's business, or at least a portion of his business, um, but I don't think he's going to find an audience today. So I don't know, man. I, I'll put twelve grand and leave it there, but I don't, I don't see it happening. And if it does, it's still mm -hmm. not going to sell. That's an yeah. FTS. Yeah, I'm going to say it gets up to like ten in okay. FTS. Um, I don't know what it's actually worth though. I don't um, I don't, you know, I don't think it's worth in the twenties. No. You, 16, yeah, 18? What do you think? Yeah, something like that. Because it's like this is not a difficult car. They, they literally made millions of Beetles, right? Um, but you're not gonna find another eighty-three with one hundred twenty-one. Miles. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there not in America. No. Uh, you're certainly gonna have to, sh you know, bring something like this in from Mexico or something like that. But I bet there's. I bet there's a bunch of them out there. I, you know, maybe get on the Samba or something like that. But the car, the thing that makes this car worth so, or could make it worth anything uh -huh. at all, is the fact that it still has all the delivery sticker stuff. And again, I think this is a showroom uh, piece. This uh, belongs. You're, on, no, and you're right. You're Auburn right Volkswagen. Refer huh. Matt Wal Welch, if you're watching, go buy this car. This thing. 121 awesome. miles, which sounds like delivery miles, mm -hmm. but um, my dad. We kept him out of the restaurant business between 1988 and 1989. <laughs> he went to the showroom for Walter Duidiak, Cars Duidiak, which is, I don't know, really cool shop here in the city. And and Walter was doing you know restoration and um, and uh, detailing and stuff. So mm -hmm. while Walter was running the business, my dad offered to kind of you know take care of the showroom. And a guy brought in a car on a consignment, and it was a 1979 Beetle that was the color of that BMW wagon, a bright blue mm -hmm. with like a white interior. 79. Mm -hmm. The car had. Eight miles on, yeah, and they were they were concerned about 
how many rotations of the tire it would take to roll it across the showroom floor because they did not want to trip it to nine. Like they yeah. thought every quarter of a mile was, was diminishing the potential collector value of this car. And I can't remember what they were trying to sell it for. I don't think they actually sold it. And we had it for like three or four months. But I just mm. remember how fanatical they were about <laughs> which, <laughs> how far in any different direction they would roll the car on the showroom to move a car around it. Like it was, it was, it was yeah. like everything was documented. It was bananas. Um, and it when, makes, it, when a car comes out of the factory at, at Puebla, yeah. they, they, they just they, they start the car, it rolls out the front, and uh-huh. they have it looks like a bus stop. Uh-huh. You have, or, or not a bus stop, it looks like one of those lines uh, at the airport in Vegas when, yeah. when everyone's waiting for the ca- taxi cab, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the car pulls up, yeah. you know, uh, one guy, one, you know, there's a team of guys that drive them out of the factory, they drive them like uh, a couple hundred feet to the, to the front of the line. Yeah. Uh, a different Mexican guy gets in. Um, they they basically play musical chairs. The guy that drove it out of the factory runs back into the factory, and the yeah. guy that that gets in it then drives it through this like it looks like a cartoon obstacle course. It's like a series of speed bumps and a really high like little thing. That, so they have to like climb up on this little <laughs> hill and then hit the brakes to test it going yeah. down the Richard, hill. Everything make, works. Before yeah, it's just like a, yeah. a, a super short crash test to make yeah. sure everything functions. You know, turn the heat on, turn the heat off, turn right. the AC on, all Lickers, that kind of stuff. That. And, then yeah. they, and it just goes through. It's just like it, it looks like an amusement park ride because these cars funny. are just lapping each other. Um, and uh, but that that couldn't be more than like you say a couple of miles. It's probably they probably get more miles driving them off of out off of the uh, ship into yeah. the port. You know, yeah, depending on how far it is to uh, Volkswagen's lot at the port. You know, yeah. or whatever yeah. the case may exactly. be, or customs or yeah. whatnot. For sure, uh, interesting. All right, JP, we'll see what <laughs> happens with that. Uh, again, I, I still think there's some value in the car, especially to somebody in the in the Volkswagen business yeah. or the Audi business or something. Might even be cool on a Porsche showroom floor. I don't know. Sure, yeah, air cooled and all that, but. Uh, Whoa, boy, it's a long way to go, I think, for Rad to achieve the value um, on their platform. But there you go. Uh, good luck, Marco, at Euro Classics. Check him out. Uh, JP, last car, and it doesn't have a year. This is really interesting. So what we're looking at is a, is a Porsche 356 replica. And uh, I will be really brief on this because you really know these cars well and currently own one, which is worth mentioning. This one was made by Intermechanica, um, which I believe is Italian. At least that's an Italian name. It's called a Roadster, and it's a uh, Roadster RS, and it's a replica of... 1959 356A convertible D. Uh, it was built in 94 and spent time in Idaho and Massachusetts before uh, find, winding up in Washington, where the seller is offering the car, having owned it since 2007. Um, so, fiberglass glass bodywork, it's not a speedster. Um, it's utilizing a 1800cc flat four with a four speed manual. There's an Alpine stereo, which is not period correct. Uh, the Nardi steering wheel would be a period correct uh, alteration, but not something you could have gotten from Porsche. Uh, it's a good looking car. I To me, it looks pretty faithful from here because uh, it, it, there's some details on it that look correct to me, but I can't glance at a 356 and tell you uh, for sure it's authentic or a replica as well as you can, or Ben the professor who helped school me on just the difference between the A's and B's and C's when we were down at Rod Emery's. So JP, take it away and tell us out of Gig Harbor, Washington, uh, is this a good one or is it not? And um, you know what? What are people looking at that might set this uh, apart from what, what most of them, I think, are speedsters? Is that fair to say? Most that is absolutely sixes? correct. Yeah. So yeah. What, um, are we, what are we looking at here, and where's the value in it? I would absolutely qualify this as a very good one. Um, the Inner Mechanica brand is one of the better ones. Um, you know, utilizing two frames and stuff like that. They do still use Volkswagen chassis. Um, but they supplement them with uh, additional support and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, an 1800cc engine is about the right size engine on this car. You're gonna, it's going to get out of its own way very quickly. I, w- I don't know if I'd say fast, but very quick. Um, this, yeah, this is a very, very good rep. It's very easy to tell. There's a couple of dead give. The easiest way to spot one of these, if for those of you who don't, who can't, if you can't tell the difference between an A or a B or a or a C or any of that kind of stuff. Um, first thing to do is just look inside and uh, look at the. Does it have a parking brake? You know the um, in the middle. In the middle, yeah, that's that's a Volkswagen, right? Um, you know, and the little levers for the heat vents and stuff a like portion that. Portion parking brake is yeah. under the dash or next to the driver's. Uh, it ain't in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah. think the early ones don't even have them. So. Um, I, yeah, I think they're pulls from underneath the dash, like on the left yeah, side. Yeah, that might be That's right. how I remember. Yeah. At least on Gary's Twin Grill Roadster from the early 
uh, 60s. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, this, you know, being a roadster, this, like you said, has roll up windows. Uh, it actually has a, a slightly larger windshield than the Speedster. Uh, and it has a thicker soft top, at least in from the factory, if that's where, if it were correct. Um, you know, the gauge setup is, is very true on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's not perfect, uh, but it is a, the quality of this car. Um, you know, these aren't, look, when you drive one of these as someone who has, you're never really trying to pass it off as a real one. That, that's just, that's lame, you know. Um, the reason why you get one of these is because it's just so fun to drive and you can't get a real one really for uh, any kind of, you know, I mean, even the, even the replicas like these are crazy expensive now. Um, and this colorway is beautiful. I think, uh, I think this car, the fact that it's a Roadster uh, replica instead of a Speedster, 99% of them are going to be uh, Speedsters. Then you'll get a small percentage of them that'll be actually coupes, and an even smaller percentage of them will be Roadsters like this, mm -hmm. and hardly any of them will be a B or a C. Like, they're crazy rare. They only made like 300. Beck made 300 um, 356B yeah. uh, replicas, and out of those, 30 of them were a Cabrio, and I have one of those. Yeah. Uh, it happens you, to be the same color as this. Yeah. yeah, you've got a B coming down the pike. Yeah. And, Correct me if I'm wrong. Don't you have like 2,300 cc's in there? Yeah, my engine's a little bigger than this one. Half a liter fall, bigger. But Half yeah. a liter bigger. It's 25% yeah. bigger. By a little, we mean yeah. it's massive. Yeah. Um, but look, this is this is a beautiful, beautiful car. And uh, this, yeah, I mean, the thing is too, like going to any Porsche events, no one is going to look at you funny because it's not a real one. Uh, in fact, you'll get more attention. I mean, it's just you, yeah. you don't buy one of these if you don't like people because you anywhere you take it, you're gonna have it's gonna draw a crowd. We were at the pit stop at Rafi shop visiting with mm -hmm. Yuri and we went into Rafi's main shop and mm -hmm. he's got, you know, gull wings mm -hmm. and Fiat 8Vs and I mean, all kinds so, of alphas so and really cool cars. Yeah. And uh, we walked up to a Porsche Roadster. Yeah. And it was a it was a replica. It's a kit yeah. car. It was yeah. silver with, with tan interior and a good looking car. Yeah. And it kinda And it was one it, of these. It was a yeah, roadster. It reminded yeah. me like this, right? Yeah. It was uh, it had, you know, the, the Porsche badging mm -hmm. and the gauges and it all looked correct. Mm -hmm. Uh but upon closer inspection, where the brake was, where the yeah. heating vents open, their you know, Volkswagen running gear instead yeah. of Porsche running gear. And that's the difference, but that car looked to be in spectacular condition. Yeah. The uh, the thickness of the uh, of the metal and the fenders is kind of a giveaway too because oh. the metal versus the fiberglass and how thick fiberglass tends to be and all that stuff. Um, but whatever. The point is, this is just a fun car to own. Um, there are manufacturers of these right now. They're putting like uh, our, our friends uh, Tony at nine hundred series in Las Vegas. He's got one in there that has an Audi one point eight T engine really? in the back with proper air conditioning. It's a Roadster like this oh, and. That yeah. one point eight T is a torque monster. I mean, that you like the tires. If you get those little <laughs> four and a half inch tires, pound car, holy cow! Just yeah. rip the tires off the back and yeah. still have AC too. So there's something yeah. to that. I I don't think I would want that though. Honestly, I don't well, think I like sound that. Right. Yeah, I like the idea of putting a, a Subaru engine because then you get that boxer noise. Yeah, according to Jason Camisso, if you have the correct length headers. Sure. So, anyways, yeah. neat stuff. Uh, Hoobie's Garage has a 550 that he just had one of those with a Subi swap in it. Yeah. But I still just, I think, I, I, I just, you know, you can get a two liter Volkswagen engine in, and that's... It just, Plenty of rip. Yeah, and it's air-cooled and it just makes it more true to the original experience. So. What's the biggest Volkswagen air-cooled motor? Is 2.4 the, the biggest one they made? Yeah, the type 2365 is, that, is, is about it. Yeah, yeah and, and then can you punch that out if you were like... Well, no, I mean, that is punched out. I don't think Volkswagen ever really made anything bigger than a, okay. a 1.8. I mean, I mean, or maybe a two. -liter. I don't know. I'm just, some Volkswagen people are going to correct me on that one. But I from the factory, they didn't. Oh. No, nah, they didn't make a factory. Oh, they did. Okay. Um, let me think. They they may have made a Type Four engine that big. That's but what not I a thought, type, but, but I don't, not a I Type really One. Really don't know. Yeah. yeah no, I'm talking. You don't type put Type four. Fours in something like this. Oh, um, you don't. Yeah. Because they don't. Look well, right. it won't fit. It's uh, the the Type Four. I mean, think of a Type Four. Is it's it's much more pancake. That's the engine that's in like a nine fourteen or or a yeah. Vanagon, right? Right. That's very flat. Yeah. Whereas the Type Ones have you know the big uh, the big fan and Shroud. the stacks yeah, on yeah, the side right. and everything like that. So it's uh it's tough to fit them in there. Yeah. So they look a lot more like a real one. And the engine is. Shorter, the anyways, whatever. All right, um, JP, here we yeah. go. So, an Inter Mechanica Roadster yeah. RS, uh, true mileage unknown, showing six thousand miles, which is probably accurate, but it's TMU uh, because probably the drivetrain is is was previously employed before this. So, a one point eight liter four speed manual, tubular steel chassis with fiberglass body and authentic Nardi wheel and video gauges. Our car was at thirty grand on twenty two bids last night. It's at. Thirty-one thousand seven hundred fifty now on uh, twenty-nine bids. So a lot of action on bring a trailer for this lot. Um, 
I have learned to appreciate these more and more as I've spent time with you and you've owned two or three of them since I've known you, which means you're buying one every like 10 months if we do the math. Uh, I think this car has every chance to bring it to 40 grand and now you're going to tell me if it's worth more than that. Yeah, this thing's easily going to get to 55. Really? All uh, right, so I'm yeah. way under. Can I change my bid to 45? Yeah, uh, sure, why not? I'm um, 45. Yeah, the, uh, the, this is a two-frame one. This isn't just sitting on a Volkswagen uh, right. chassis, so that's the big thing on this car. Um, so is that superior? Is that going to be better than way Volkswagen? Way better, yeah, yeah way, okay. way, way, way better. So this yeah. is really is a nice one. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, look, I've given my number. It, I, I, 55, is that what yeah, you think? Yeah, if, if, fair enough. If it hit 60, it wouldn't surprise me. That would be really high for a 356. 550s uh, are are very regularly hitting the high uh, the high 50 marks and sometimes sure. over 60. If this were one of those with uh, with the Audi engine or the you know Subaru swap, some of those are well into the 60s too. But this being a roadster, do, being as nice as this is, well, yeah. Do, do you, I know you've shopped a lot of these cars mm -hmm. out of the secondary market, but what does it cost to make this car today? Oh, that's a good question. Um, like if we wanted to go buy a brand new one, yeah, uh, I, gee, I don't know. I don't know the answer Are to that. But I'm, I'm sure it's got to be. Remember, Runge yeah. was making his cars for dirt cheap, and now you can't get them. I mean, his cars yeah. are half a million dollars. Yeah. But initially, they were you know little garage East project cars. You know. Yeah, but that's not even. You can't even remotely put those in the same class. I mean, a Runge or Runge or however you pronounce right. that. His cars are hand built. You know, aluminum Raw stamped aluminum, out. Yeah, yeah I mean that that is like. Art Deco. Yeah, I mean those are pieces of art, and um, you know, whereas these are just fiberglass molds, um, right. and so that's a whole different animal. Um, the amount of man hours that goes into a rungi or a rung um, yeah. is, yeah, it's not the same. But I'm yeah. just saying, like his cars are worth four x now. Or do you have to pay four x to get one of these? Is this not for a brand new one? Yeah, you're probably yeah. up there in that. You know, I guess I'm sure it depends on which powertrain you put in them too. Absolutely, fair, fair. Um, but uh, yeah, Vent, someone's going to have a lot of fun with that car. Um, the thing is, this is a great car to own right now because it's summertime wherever you're at. Um, this, you know, fall and spring, uh, this is a great, there are great times to enjoy one of these because the heat doesn't ever really work in them and the <laughs> air conditioning hardly ever works in them. Um, <laughs> if it even has it, which is very, very, very unlikely and this one certainly doesn't. So, um, but this is not a winter car. This is not a utility car. These are toys and that is always right, the kind of... Like, you know, if you uh, bundle up, like, you know, if yeah. you're not a cabrio phone, you can drive this yeah. car in Vegas right. in the winter, Southern California. Well, you for sure. Yeah. It's not it's raining like, on yeah, you. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you it's know, not a winter I mean, car in... Washington. That's yeah, fair. and let's face it, you know, if somebody buys this in Ohio or Wisconsin or something like that, it's, it's you know, a seasonal car. You're not, yeah. Yeah. So, so now is the time. This guy's got a good chat. He's on the right platform. The mm -hmm. car the car shows well. So we'll mm -hmm. see uh, if, if this one breaks the bank because it looks like it's nice. Yeah. All right. That's well, fun. that's a show. We're going to get down and uh, we're going to go down to Santa Cruz and see our friends Lane and Warren uh, at the DWA studio the Wrigley at Wrigley Building. We're going building. back to the yeah. old studio. They're yeah. going to blow the dust off of it and let us in. So make sure you look for that podcast this Thursday. I think that's when that drops. It might drop earlier if you're one of their Patreon members. Uh, we would encourage you to become one of our paper Patreon members, uh, all, except that we don't know how. Um, we do have a Patreon account. I'm sure there's a way we to go on there, should, find us, and give us we money. We should offer a smash the like button gloves. Yeah, you know, sure, why not? Um, we'll give you a sticker. Uh, we've got, the, I don't, can you guys see the Bid Nerd sticker? Yeah, it's, uh, don't take it off, it looks good up there. Okay, well, nobody can see it. Too late now. I screwed it up. Anyways, uh, that's the <laughs> show, guys. We will see you tomorrow at around 9 o'clock. We appreciate you hanging out. We love the Nerd Herd. And uh, we will have more cars for you to nerd out on. Nerd!